hear what you're going to say. But yeah, let's start with um, what are some key constraints to understand when designing a program for a high performance facility? You see all these you know exercises that are, are sexy, exciting. Um, you know some of them uh, are have their place in programs, but cannot can can cause a student or a new coach to be become overwhelmed essentially. Um, and they're just not sure where to start. So sometimes we see instances where there's a million exercises up in this cloud, this library that they've got of exercises, and they just don't know where to start. Um, you know, there's other circumstances where they probably just lack the knowledge, whether it's from a movement or a muscular point of view. Maybe it's just, you know, a exercise uh, library point of view that they create programs that aren't really well-rounded. So, you know, we say, okay, create a, a lower body strength program and say, okay, a leg press, a trap bar dead, uh, a leg extension, a lunge, uh, and a front squat, and, you know, all in their own right, you know, can be fantastic exercises, but all put into that sequence can be, um, you know, obviously pretty imbalanced depending on what you're trying to achieve and who you're working with. And where does, you mentioned screening, and let's throw testing in there as well. Yeah. Uh, what what do you test and, and how does that fit in with your, your philosophy with these 3D 160-degree uh, athletes? Yeah, so from a movement point of view, we've probably played around with a few different variations. Um, you know, we've had uh, influence from uh, Ian McCown, who's high performance at, at Port Adelaide, who did his PhD on the AAA, um, and I did some work under him um, when I was working for Port Adelaide uh, Development. So, you know, that was uh, something we played with as well. Um, we're actually sort of just exploring now the the valve movement screen assessment as well. You know, there's some new tools there that we're going to have, have a bit of a squeeze at. You know, simply we've got some coaches that will do sort of just work their way through the continuum. So they might do a bodyweight squat. Yep, you've ticked that off. Okay, let's go into a, a split squat. Okay, that's good. Okay, let's go into a Bulgarian. Okay, that's all sweet. Now let's add some load. And they sort of work their way down the chain and maybe identify a point down that continuum. Uh, in which that they think there's a limitation or something they can work on. And you mentioned earlier with individualization uh, for the sport, um, so that we, you, you know, you, you tie that into their what's relevant from from them within your fundamental movement patterns. Mm. With the, with the testing, how much do you go into that sort of force velocity profiling, and how does that look for strength and conditioning coaches? Like how how do you implement that? How does that influence your decision making from a programming point of view? Yeah, to to an extent, I guess once you've you've worked through enough athletes, you've generally got a bit of an idea of, of where you're going to start to tailor, um, you know, what you're after, and, and it can be dependent on the stage of the season as well, and potentially sometimes on what that client or athlete asks you to, uh, or, or sort of tells you what they're they're looking for to achieve, but <clears throat> but usually we can paint a pretty good picture. So, you know, one of the things we utilise is, is a pretty simple, you know, DSI, for example. So we look at what is the um, you know, peak vertical force you can produce in a counter member jump. How does that compare to your peak vertical force in an isometric mid thigh pull? Uh, you know, what's the difference there? Get a bit of a rough guide. You know, if they're looking at if they can only produce, you know, less sixty percent or less of their you know peak vertical force in a counter member jump as opposed to them iso mid thigh pull, then potentially that rate of force development is a lot more of a focus for us. Um, you know, the guidelines talk to us from from the guys we communicate pretty um, uh, frequently with a vow, you know, if it's somewhere between 60 to 80% concurrent training is pretty appropriate. And then conversely, you know, if you're producing 80% worth or more of your um, peak vertical force in academy with jump as opposed to mid type pull, then let's just get those athletes really, really strong. So that's probably, you know, I would say in in most scenarios where we do a bit of that force velocity profiling. Since running the facility and, and looking after the programming, um, what have been some big big learnings in your experience so far to, to wrap it up this topic? Yeah, I think you know implementing it, and again, it's something that's been re reiterated. You know, when we uh, have talked to the guys, at athletes or authority, for example, um, you know, you certainly want to provide that care and certainly a, you know a percentage and an extent of individualization to each person that you work with but at the end of the day if you if you, and, and it's something that woody goes on about too nailing those fundamentals is going to be first on your priority list and you're going to drive yourself insane if you're sitting there you know for for example working with 500 athletes uh if you're going through and trying to highly individualize and and simply you know change exercise progressions for the sake of it so that you know john's program doesn't look like jack's program when inherently there's nothing really you know underlying that that there needs to be a change for that there um where is the best place to get in contact 
with yourself. Mate. Yeah, in Instagram, peak performance, but we are PEAQ and uh, it's not that I am dyslexic. It's just a little acronym there for personalized, evidence-based, applied and qualified. So wow, that's clearing wait. it up for a few people. There we go. I've spat that out a few times. <laughs> yeah, that was um, good. So yeah, at peak performance on Instagram uh, and uh, yeah, peak or peak conditioning on uh, on Facebook and just www.peak.com.au.